Hi, my name is Tatiana Zamir, and I'm a choreographer, performing artist, and holistic healer. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about my journey with joy. Abdul Baha says, Joy gives us wings. In times of joy, our strength is more vital, our intellect keener, and our understanding less clouded. We seem better able to cope with the world and to find our sphere of usefulness. I've been thinking a lot about joy lately, wondering why is joy so easy for some people to access and a lot harder for others? How many people are actively seeking joy? And how many people are settling for a state of being that is less than ideal, at least when measured against their own standards? And I've also been thinking about my personal relationship with joy, and I've been realizing that being in a state of joy is not something that has come easy for me unless I'm actively nurturing my relationship with it. According to the World Health Organization, over 300 million suffer from depression worldwide, and I would consider myself one of those people. Both my parents were alcoholics and drug addicts. My father's been in prison most of my life, and he still is. And my mother did the best she could to raise me as a single mom. But even at her best, it included a lot of emotional abuse and neglect. And after years of sobriety and grueling emotional work, my mother looks back at the way she treated me, and she regrets so much of that. And she's doing the best she can to make it up to me in my adulthood. But still, the dynamic that I had with my mother and my father really crushed my sense of self at an early age. And I grew up a really sad child. I actually even forget just how sad I was until I come across journals that I find that are filled with melancholy poems or just reflections of the state I was in. In fact, I actually remember contemplating to commit suicide a couple of times. There were a few things that helped me get through this darker period of my life, and I'm going to share two of those things with you. One of those things is I ate a lot of sugar for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I was like, can I get some pancakes with my pizza, please? And I'll take some fried onion rings and a Coke and an apple pie with ice cream, of course, because there's always room for desserts, <laughs> even when your meal's already a dessert. Um, so yeah, I don't know that sugar was the best long-term solution, but with the tools I had at that time, it definitely helped me cope with um, the sadness that I felt as a child. The second thing that I was gifted was my relationship with my amazing grandmother. My grandmother and I were so close. We were total besties. We like, did everything together. She would take me to the park every day. We would go to museums or see a performance art show. I loved her so much. In fact, when I was a little girl, I asked her if she would marry me once I got older. <laughs> So I had some healthy ways of coping with my struggles and perhaps some less desirable ways. Now, just to be clear, I'm not knocking sadness. I think that emotions like sadness and pain and fear, they all have a place. They're all teachers. And I think it's important that we embrace those emotions and see what lessons we can learn from them, right? Because oftentimes it's when we're going through our most difficult and testing times that we have the opportunity to learn and grow the most. And besides, how do we truly know joy and happiness without also knowing pain and grief and heartbreak? I just think that it's important that we find healthy ways to process our pain. Because we know that if we don't find a healthy way to release it, the body will find a way to express our pain, oftentimes through illness and disease which is why depression is the leading cause of disability all around the world. And yet I think some people think of joy as a selfish thing to, you know, attempt to acquire, maybe quaint or trite. Like, sure, it's nice to feel joy, but I have, like, other more real and important things to focus on in life, right? And yet, joy is a virtue. It's a spiritual quality that allows us to tap into our higher self. And I know that that's true for me, because when I am in my joy, I'm happier, I'm more productive, and I feel like I'm just present in some more satisfying ways. 
And thankfully, I've always been invested in healing myself from my past experiences and really developing my spiritual growth. And through a whole lot of prayer and meditation and lots of dancing, of course, <laughs> and um, therapy, you know, attending self-development workshops and working with some really amazing healers, a lot of doors have opened up for me, including healing as a doorway to joy. Another way that I'm able to tap into my joy is by nurturing my callings. And I noticed that in particular, my calling as an artist is really vital for me to tend to if I want to be in my ultimate joy. And I noticed this a couple of years ago when I produced my first dance theater show. I was so nervous. I had so much fear. I didn't feel like I was equipped enough to do something like this. I was like, what are people going to think? Um, but once I just kind of got through some of that and started diving into the creative process, I felt a joy that I had never felt before. My marriage improved, my relationships were strong, my sense of self just felt um, really in alignment. I felt like I had a purpose to be here and that my life mattered. And I remember thinking, you know what? It doesn't matter if anybody likes my work. If this is what I get to feel just by diving into the creative process, then it's worth it for me to do that. Another thing that gets me in my joy is just making sure that I'm living a very intentional life. And for me, that means connecting with my community, whether that's teaching my weekly Afro-hip-hop class or co-hosting devotional gatherings where friends and family come over and we get to connect through fellowship and some yummy food and interfaith prayer, or just getting together with my girlfriends. Women are so powerful. And I'm so blessed to have some amazing women in my life who totally uplift me and just help me tap into my highest self. The last thing that I'm going to share with you about how I'm able to tap into my joy is by making sure that I'm taking care of my body. And one of the ways that I do that is by making sure that I cut out refined sugar from my diet. Now, I mentioned earlier that I ate a lot of sugar to cope with a lot of my stress and my pain as a kid but I can't afford to do that anymore. Sugar makes me really depressed. I'm tired all day, my sense of self plummets. Um, everything just feels like it kind of falls to the wayside. So I haven't found a way to 100% cut out sugar from my diet, but I do everything I can to keep it away from me because I know what's at stake if I don't. So making sure that I'm taking care of myself that I'm connecting with friends and family and loved ones that uplift me. They're all a part of my journey of making sure that I'm able to access my joy. And I'm no expert, I'm still figuring this out. But if you are also interested in finding a way to continue to deepen and cultivate your relationship with joy, then I'd like to leave you with one suggestion. And that is to make a list of everything that brings you joy. And make sure that you do at least one of those things every single day. I don't care if it's as simple as, you know, drinking your favorite tea or a smoothie in the morning or taking a workout class that your favorite instructor is teaching or just making sure that you're connecting with someone that, that makes you happy, right? Whether that's in person or through a phone call. So I hope that you guys take some time to reflect on how you can experience joy on a more consistent basis. Because as Abdu'l-Baha says, joy gives us wings. And as he continues to encourage us, he says, if we are not happy and joyful in this season, for what other season shall we wait? And for what other time shall we look? Thank you.